Hello and welcome to this video about the composition of matter. In this video we're going to look at what matter is and we're going to look at pure substances versus mixtures. Pure substances meaning elements and compounds and different kinds of mixtures, heterogeneous and homogeneous. So remember that matter must have mass and occupy space. Matter is everything around us, even things we can't see. All matter exists either as a pure substance or as a mixture. If we look at pure substances first, what is a pure substance? It is any type of matter with a fixed composition. And we're going to look at two different pure substances. A pure substance can either be an element or a compound. Let's look at what an element is first. An element is a substance that is made up of atoms that are all alike. Only one kind of atom. Some examples of elements would be uh, this aluminum foil has only aluminum in it. Only one kind of atom. And here would be all the little aluminum atoms together in that aluminum foil. Uh, this is a tank of oxygen. And oxygen is an element. Oxygen happens to go around as a diatomic molecule. It's, it's uh, two oxygens are always hooked together. But they're all oxygens, so it's an element. There are about 90 different elements that are found naturally on Earth. And if you look at the periodic table on the wall in your science classroom, can see a lot of different elements. There, there are about 20 other elements uh, additional in addition to those 90 that have been uh, made in laboratories, but they're usually very short-lived and unstable. So what is a compound? That's the other kind of pure substance. We know an element's made of one kind of atom. A compound is made of two or more elements. Uh, combined chemically in a fixed proportion. So that means uh, there have to be at least two different kinds of atoms in order to be a compound. So what do we mean when we say fixed proportions? What, what exactly does that mean? Water is a great example because you all know H2O is water. When we write this, it means there are two hydrogens and only one oxygen in every water molecule. So every single water molecule has exactly two hydrogens and one oxygen. That is the fixed proportion. Sodium chloride, that is another compound. And sodium chloride is table salt. Sodium chloride comes from two different elements. And there is always, in every sodium chloride compound, there is always one sodium atom and one chlorine atom. These individually are elements. Chlorine gas looks like this. Sodium metal looks like this. And when they are combined in a one-to-one -one ratio, fixed proportion, we get sodium chloride, which looks a lot different from these individual elements. So now that we know what pure substances are, let's take a look at what mixtures are. Mixtures are composed of two or more substances that can be physically separated. That's different from a pure substance. When we talk about a pure substance, we cannot physically separate them. We cannot take the sodium and the chlorine and physically separate them from each other in that compound. That's a chemical separation. We have to do a chemical reaction to make that happen. In a mixture, though, we have these different substances that can be physically separated. Uh, there are two different kinds of mixtures we're going to look at heterogeneous and homogeneous. So let's look first at what a heterogeneous mixture is. In a heterogeneous mixture, the different materials remain distinct. Here's some really good examples. This bowl of M&Ms, very distinct uh, different materials. We have the different colors, red and blue and green and yellow. In this salad, the different materials are very distinct. Uh, these things are all touching each other. The different components are touching each other, the different substances, but they are definitely distinct. They are not interacting with each other chemically. We can physically separate those from each other. Uh, the sand on this beach 
is a heterogeneous mixture. It may not look that way, but when you get really close and you start to look, there are very distinct different materials in that sand. Let's take a look at a couple of different types of heterogeneous mixtures. Um, there are heterogeneous mixtures that are called suspensions. A suspension is a special type of heterogeneous mixture where we have a liquid and, a so and solid particles and the solid particles settle. So here would be an example where we have scooped up some muddy water from a river and that sand and uh, dirt sediment eventually settles to the bottom. That's a suspension. So this river water is also a suspension. Um, it's carrying the sediment and the different particles and when you scoop it up and let it be still for a while, those particles will settle out. They're suspended in the water. A colloid is another special type of heterogeneous mixture where the particles do not settle. Um, it's composed of components that if you let them just stand, they don't settle. Here is a glass with a little bit, it's, it has water in it, but some milk has been added. Um, and that milk is not going to settle. It remains, it remains in the water and mixed in with the water. Um, it's called a colloid. It never does settle out. Paint is also a colloid. It has the suspended particles in it that never settle out. Um, gases and solids can also contain colloidal particles. Uh, here's a picture of fog. Um, it shows particles of liquid water that are suspended in the air, in the gas. Um, smoke contains solids suspended in the air as well. So one way you know um, if a mixture is a colloid is that um, it's, the particles are large enough to scatter light. Here, in this example right here, we have a light beam shining through just the pure water. And when it shines through this colloid, you can see that the particles in that colloid that are suspended in there are large enough to scatter the light. Uh, same with the, in this fog situation. Um, if you pass a beam of light through it, it can be seen as it passes through a colloid. This scattering of a light beam as it passes through a colloid is what we call the Tyndall effect. Now let's take a look at our other kind of mixture, homogeneous mixtures. They remain constantly and uniformly mixed, unlike those heterogeneous mixtures. Homogeneous, same. Uh, they're uniformly mixed, constant. The particles are small and they never settle. Another name for a homogeneous mixture would be a solution, like Gatorade. You never have your particles settling out of your Gatorade. That sugar, those electrolytes, the water, the coloring, it's all uniformly mixed and remains that way. So a lot of times uh, we think of solutions as being a solid dissolved in a liquid, like uh, the particles dissolved in this Gatorade, sugar water, salt water. Um, but solutions can also be mixtures of a solid and a gas, or a solid and a solid, like uh, this metal alloy here. Um, it could be a gas and a liquid. Um, here we have compressed gas used by divers with uh, different gases, solutions of gases. Um, so those also are solutions as well. Here's an overall diagram to help us uh, understand what matter is. It can be divided into pure substances, either elements or compounds, or mixtures. We have our heterogeneous mixtures and homogeneous mixtures. What do you think this pop is in, in these pop cans, soda pop, or however you say it? Well, it certainly isn't a pure substance, right? It ha it's a mixture of water, sugar, flavor, color, and even some carbon dioxide, uh, some gas in there. Uh, when, when the can is closed like this, um, that carbon dioxide is mixed in there, and we have a fairly homogeneous mixture. When you pop open the can, however, uh, you uh, are changing what is going on. The, the carbon dioxide is being released, and you can even see it when you pour this drink out. You can see that uh, 
carbon dioxide escaping from the liquid. Uh, it's, it's a solution of the carbon dioxide in the liquid. And you have a heterogeneous mixture, very different parts to it. Um, once all the carbon dioxide is released and you have your plain old flat pop, which is water, sugar, flavor, color, you have your homogeneous mixture again. Some advanced ideas. What's the connection between colorful, beautiful sunsets like this one and suspensions? Or what's the difference between a molecule and a compound? What are some examples? What is a molecule? How does the element americium detect smoke and smoke detectors? Or maybe you have some other interesting questions to ask. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in class.